What up YouTube, Trev here, Summit or Nothing, back again for another episode where we look at the tents and shelters of Summit or Nothing. So far we've looked at the impressive Van Gogh Mirage 200 which scored 37 out of 50 and the Army Surplus 2x3 shelter which only scored 24. In this episode it's yet another Van Gogh, the Van Gogh Banshee 200. You love a bit of a Van Gogh, don't you boys? So how will this tent fare against the rest? Let's find out. Van Gogh are a prominent contender in the field of outdoors activities and the Van Gogh Banshee is one of their most popular tents amongst hikers and backpackers. It's a low-lying two-man tent, relatively light and comes at a reasonable price, selling brand new for around £120, great price for a well-known brand. Mine weighs in at a little under 2 kilograms, but they are advertised at normally coming in over that, so not the lightest tent on the market. I use mine as a one-man tent because quite honestly as a two-man tent it fails straight away. For a taller individual this tent isn't quite long enough and I must admit that even with just myself in there with all my gear to say it is a bit of a squeeze is an understatement. I'm sleeping this side, got my bag over here, down the bottom, there's my boots and that. It is a small tent. The Banshee, much like the Mirage, is relatively easy to put up. And as a two skin tent it's possible to put up the outer skin first allowing the inner to be clipped to the underside in protection from the weather. These layers can also remain together when you collapse it down making the tent easier to put up the next time around. And once again the Banshee comes in the generous sized Van Gogh stuff sack which is ideal for packing away in a hurry and without any fuss. Unlike the Mirage however this tent is not freestanding. It's a hoop design with just two poles at either end, producing what many hikers refer to as a nylon coffin. You simply thread these poles through the fly sheet and then by pulling the guide ropes taut and pegging them down, the poles are pulled upright and with the tension working in opposite directions keeps them standing up. This is all well and good as long as you have good ground to peg into, something I struggled to find when camping in a forest at Dartmoor. Two or three full starts, but I've got my, uh, got my tent up in the end. In the end, I even had to tie one end to a nearby tree. Adapt and overcome. The hoop design does have its drawbacks, mainly not a great deal of headroom or room to sit up in. And in high winds, the fabric of the tent flaps merely inches above your head. But being a smaller, low-lying tent does help it to stand up against the wild weather that our stomping ground of Dartmoor is known to throw at us. Looks like we've chosen another f great night to come out wild camping. The Banshee is certainly robust enough to withstand the high speed winds that battered us on both our New Year's wild camp at Bleak House Ruins and once again when we camped in Belleville Forest in winds of excess of 40 miles an hour. The Banshee survived both camps without so much as a peg out of place. The Banshee has one side entrance and its porch is hardly any size at all and this is another drawback as there is no real vestibule in which to store and remove wet gear so there is not much choice but to drag water in with you. Well, I'm in my tent now, in out of the rain but I've sort of dragged a lot of wet clothes and things in here and a wet bag and wet boots. There seems to be a lot of water in this tent now. At a push you could probably just about fit your boots in the porch but cooking meals in it has proved to be a nightmare during those aforementioned high winds. I've got my boil on what I'm having to do is hold my porch back while I'm cooking, see there? My fingers are f***ing On a plus side though, the small size and dual layers mean that it is relatively easy to hold your heat. It's quite mild as well. I haven't even put my thermal layers on yet, you know? It's worth noting that the Banshee was my main tent for over a year and it was a great tent to call my own as a wild camping novice starting out. So now for the rating. Price. At £120 brand new, the Banshee is a reasonable price, especially as it's a brand that has a favourable reputation. 8 out of 10. Weight. At around 2 kilograms, there are certainly lighter two-man tents on the market. And as it's only really good for one man, there are certainly much lighter alternatives out there for the solo hiker. 6 out of 10. Practicality. Van Gogh tents are known for their ease of erecting and dismantling and the Banshee is no exception. Being able to keep the two layers together and having the oversized stuff sack to shove it into make packing up an easy task. However its hoop design makes it slightly harder to put up than a freestanding tent especially if the ground is not ideal. 7 out of 10. Comfort. The Banshee is too short for most, a tight space with no headroom and its lack of a decent sized porch means that you will most likely be dragging your wet gear in with you too. But it does offer some comfort in that a smaller space is easier to keep warm. 6 out of 10. 
durability. Its factory sealed fly sheet seams make for extra protection against the rain and its low lie and tunnel design is a great shape to withstand high winds, making the durability of this little tent a great asset. 9 out of 10. So the Van Gogh Banshee scores a grand total of 36 out of a possible 50, bringing it into second place behind its larger cousin, the Mirage.